Welcome to The Truth, hosted by Mike and D. Fish. Whether you're a skeptic about the power of God, a person who needs a miracle in their life or body, a believer seeking inspiration, or someone standing at the crossroads of doubt and belief, this platform is for you. The Truth, a place that is a sanctuary for believers, a space for skeptics, and a haven for those seeking signs, wonders, miracles, and the truth. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time to diligently seek the Lord, right? And I'm going to tell you what the Bible says happens when you do that, right? The Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So guess what? Expect to be rewarded today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Come on. So so yesterday I made a post about faith and, and it got a lot of response. So I was thinking about it. And, and what I'd like to do today, I'd like to expand upon that a little bit. And, and I know it's going to bless you. I know it's going to bless you mightily. Amen. So, so here's what the post said. It said this. Real faith ain't hoping God will heal you or even knowing that God's able to heal you. It's being full of joy because you know it's already done because God, who cannot lie, has promised it already, right? Just simply believe, right? Believing is faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? Mark 11.22, have faith in God. Faith is believing that we got something we can't see. It's believing that we got something we can't feel even though we can't see it even though we can't feel it we know it's a done deal right that's the kind of faith that brings deliverance that's the kind of faith that brings deliverance come on let me add this while we're at it what what's coming out of your mouth you know what's coming are you are you crying about and glorifying what the devil's doing to you you know the bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue right words kill words give life they're either poison or their fruit but you decide you decide right so again are you crying about are you glorifying what the devil's doing to you or are you confessing what the living word of god says you know what what what, what the lord's already done for you right faith's confession it's always a joyful confession right it confesses that we got money before it's arrived it confesses perfect healing while there's still pain in the body it confesses victory while defeat seems like certain to everybody else in the world right your confession again it's based on the living word of God, right? I know who I trust. I'm fully persuaded that he's not only able to make good, but he's making good now in my case. Can you say hallelujah? So right now, believe even though you're in pain. Believe even though you tried to walk, but you couldn't. Keep on believing. Keep acting on your faith. It's believing that drives out the pain. It's believing that lifts people out of wheelchairs, right? The unbeliever says, let me feel and then I'll believe. God says, no, believe believe and then I'll let you feel. Real faith believes without being able to feel. We're healed according to our faith, not our feelings, right? Feeling comes after your faith has been acted on, right? So don't look for feeling. No, right now look for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Faith for healing is believing absolutely we're healed in spite of things like pain, in spite of things like weakness, right? It's simply believing we got whatever it is we prayed for before seeing it and before feeling it. That that's exactly what, what John John meant when, in, in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. He said this, And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. We are sure, I said sure, that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and he hears us. And since, right? Since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know we it's settled and absolute knowledge, hallelujah, that we have been granted us as our present possessions, the requests made of him. You don't have to wait or see to, to see or feel anything. Believe you got it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Why don't you do that right where you are right now? Lift your hands. I said lift your hands wherever you are right now and receive that blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, prayers are being answered now. Bodies are being healed right now. Depression is lifting right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Addictions being broken now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, receive it. Receive it. Come on. Hallelujah. And I'll praise him for it in the name of Jesus. So let's expand upon that a little bit. Let's expand. Let's go to Hebrews eleven six. It says, 
But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Again, so without without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, when you got people, they say to me, oh, you shouldn't listen to these faith preachers. Listen, <laughs> it doesn't say it's hard to please God without faith. No, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. So if people get this attitude, you know, that's taught in so many churches today. You know, well, if God wants to do it, he can do it. You know, it's in his time. Let me ask you something. If you had that same attitude about your salvation, what would happen? Oh, you know, well, if God wants to save me, you know, I'm ready for him to save me. Oh, whenever he wants to save me, no, listen, you'll go to hell because you're you're not saved in God's timing. You're saved when you act and you carry out your faith to receive salvation. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, what? You will be saved. Come on, that's Romans 10, 9. So, so the responsibility is on us. The responsibility is on you. It's on me to take that thing God gave us called what? Called faith and put it into action to receive our salvation. Well, it's the same for everything you receive from God. It's all accessed by faith. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right? Not difficult to please God, impossible to please God. And let me add this, right? Uh, Faith don't ignore the problems. It doesn't ignore. God gave us faith to deal with the problems. God gave us faith to move mountains. Your your mountain, whatever it is right now, yeah, it's real. But God's faith inside of you moves every mountain and it calms every troubled sea in your path today in the mighty name of Jesus. I said today in the mighty name of Jesus and there's nothing. I said there's nothing the devil can do about it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, there's a power. I said a power and faith that can turn loose, that makes makes the blind to see, that makes the deaf to hear, that opens prison doors, come on, and locks the door that the devil has shut in the face of your family for generations. I'm telling you, that faith, that's getting turned loose into you today. Come on, you're going to turn it loose in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to see the miraculous, and I promise you by the word of God, these last two months of this year are going to be the best two months you've ever had in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. So I just want to talk about the four levels of faith in the Bible. Bible. Four levels of faith in the Bible. So let's start in uh, Mark 6, verse 1. Jesus left that part of the country and he returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, Where did he get all this wisdom and power to perform such miracles? Verse 3, then they scoffed, he's just a carpenter, just the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live here right among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Verse 4, then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, let me say that again, and because of their unbelief, he could do no mighty miracles there. Come on, this is Jesus. What do you say? Because of their unbelief, not, oh, he wouldn't do any miracles there to punish them, right? Or not, he wouldn't do any miracles there because the devil was hindering them. No, he could do no mighty miracles there because of their unbelief, except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. And then it says, Jesus went from village to village teaching the people. So what do you do if you're faced with a situation like that? What do I do, right? When I, when I, ministering and people just ain't getting it. I teach. I teach. Come on, you teach because the word of God destroys unbelief. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mark 9, 14. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When when the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about, Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought you my son so you could heal him. He's possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast the evil spirit about him, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, What? You faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Come on, look at all 
these things are centered around faith, guys, right? Why, why couldn't the demon come out? Why? Faith. He said, you didn't have enough faith, you know? And then people get mad. Oh, these people make everything sound like, you know, if you're having a problem, it's because you don't have enough faith. And, and I'm sorry, but yes, that's right. Absolutely. You know, God forbid somebody takes some blame or some responsibility for anything that's wrong with their life. Anything going on? You don't know. Verse 20, right? So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's dad. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him in a fire or into a pit trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. That's what he said to Jesus. You know, notice that. Notice what I just read to you. Like most Christians today, right? He go on for a whole paragraph how the devil's wrecking in his life, how the devil's beating him up. And then at times it comes time to say something positive. Help us if you can. And, and what do he say? Verse 23, what do you mean if I can? Jesus said, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. That's faith level number one. If you can. I want you to notice, you know, oh, people, well, whenever God's ready. No, it's when you're ready. Come on, say I'm ready. Say, I'm ready, right? Right. It said Jesus could do no mighty miracles because of their unbelief. And then until this guy got corrected, well, how did he correct him? What do you mean, if I can? All things are possible. The guy tried to throw it all on God, you know? Well, if you can do it, what do you mean me? If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes, all right? And, and that, that's how the devil messes people up. Oh, I don't know why God, you know, in God's time, you know, I know when God, no, no, God's up in heaven. He's like, what do you mean me? What do you mean? No, guys, listen, build your faith. Have faith in God. Call those things that are not as though they are. Start speaking to your mind mountain commanded to move today in the mighty name of Jesus I'm telling you all things are possible if you will believe. Come on, you know you know something? I don't care if you've been saved five minutes. If you can look at God right now and say, I believe your word, by faith, you can stand on the same platform as him and you can start to command things just the same way he commands things. Why? Because all things are possible for him. And if you believe his word, then all things are possible for you. Can I get a a great big hallelujah for that come on wherever you are hey everybody thank you for joining me today thank you for taking the time to diligently seek the lord right and i'm going to tell you what the bible says happens when you do that the bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so guess what expect to be rewarded today in the mighty name of jesus amen Come on, so so yesterday I, I made a post about faith and, and it got a lot of response. So I was thinking about it and, and what I'd like to do today, I'd like to expand upon that a little bit. I know it's going to bless you. I know it's going to bless you mightily. Amen. So, so here's what the post said. It said this, real faith ain't hoping God will heal you or even knowing that God's able to heal you. It's being full of joy because you know it's already done because God who cannot lie has promised it already. Just simply believe. Believing is faith. Hebrews 11 1 says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mark 11 22 have faith in God. Faith is believing that we got something we can't see. It's believing that we got something we can't feel even though we can't see it even though we can't feel it we know it's a done deal right that's the kind of faith that brings deliverance that's the kind of faith that brings deliverance come on let me add this while we're at it what what's coming out of your mouth you know what's coming are you are you crying about and glorifying what the devil's doing to you the bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue words kill words give life they're either poison or their fruit but you decide you decide again are you crying about are you glorifying what the devil's doing to you or are you confessing what the living word of god says you know what what what, what the lord's already done for you faith's confession it's always a joyful confession it confesses that we got money before it's arrived it confesses perfect healing while there's still pain in the body it confesses victory while defeat seems like certain to everybody else in the world your confession again is based on the 
living word of God. I know who I trust. I'm fully persuaded that he's not only able to make good, but he's making good now in my case. Can you say hallelujah? So right now, believe even though you're in pain. Believe even though you tried to walk, but you couldn't. Keep on believing. Keep acting on your faith. It's believing that drives out the pain. It's believing that lifts people out of wheelchairs. The unbeliever says, let me feel and then I'll believe. God says, no, believe and then I'll let you feel. Real faith believes without being able to feel. We're healed according to our faith, not our feelings. Feeling comes after your faith has been acted on. Right? So don't look for feeling. No, right now look for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Faith for healing is believing out absolutely we're healed in spite of things like pain, in spite of things like weakness. It's simply believing we got whatever it is we prayed for before seeing it and before feeling it. That, that's exactly what, what John John meant when, in, in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Shout hallelujah. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah, you get to actually act on his behalf. You get to act on his behalf. Hallelujah. Come on, if you believe that and you're happy about that and you're ready to do that today, Come on, wherever you are, put those anointed hands together and give him a shout of praise, unless you're driving. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Oh, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, faith level number one, if you can. Not even sure whether God can do it or not, right? That's not you, or you wouldn't be here, right? Faith level number two, Matthew 8. So, so that was the lowest, right? If you can. Uh, those are the people that, that they don't even know if God has the power to do it, all right? Level two, though, Matthew 8, verse 1. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, I know if you want to, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. But watch this. Before he healed him again, he corrected him, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus reached out and touched him. I I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Come on, say that out loud wherever you are. God is willing. Come on, I said say it out loud. God is is willing. Come on. It's not on God. It's not on God. It's up to you and it's up to me. You know, people, oh God, I know if you know. No, Matthew 22. Tell the servants to tell everyone. The table's been set. All things are re ready. Pull up a chair and take what you want. Come on. Joshua 18.3. Hallelujah. How long will you be slack to go into the land that the Lord has promised you? Come on. I'm willing. He said, I want to. He said, be healed and instantly the leprosy disappeared come on level two he can so level one is if he can level two is i know you can you know god has the power but 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 you don't know if he'll do it for you right listen the devil don't care. The devil don't care if you believe that God's mighty. He don't believe if you believe that God's all-powerful as long as you don't think he'll do it for you. You know, I'll say to people, do you believe God can heal cancer? They're like, oh, yeah, I believe, right? Do you believe he can heal the cancer you got right now? Uh, um, I, You know, it'll be great. It'll be great. I sure hope so. No, 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 no. Uh, great. Uh, listen, I'm sorry, but if it stays there, until that's corrected, it's not going to happen. I said nothing's going to happen. Jesus said, I want to. Yeah, you. So you got to settle that right now. You got to get that in your spirit today. Get in, in your spirit right now. Not only is God all powerful, not only is he able to, no, he loves me. He'll do it for me. If he'll do it for anybody, he'll do it for me. He's not a respecter of persons. Come on. If he's going to do it for anybody, he's going to do it for Mike first. Why? Because he loves me. Hallelujah. At least as much as he loves everybody else. Hallelujah. He's not only almighty, he cares about me. Again, if he'll do it for anybody, he'll do it for me. If he'll do it for anybody, he'll do it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Level three, Mark five, the woman with the issue of the blood. You know, she said to herself, well, she said to herself, I know when I touch him, I will be made well, right? Now, now, now listen, now this lady, I teach this, you know, this lady didn't need to be corrected. Why? 
because she didn't do anything wrong. Jesus hadn't died yet. You know, so for her to say, I know he will, that was actually, right, at that time, the highest level of faith that you could express. I know when I touch him, I will be made well, right? That, again, that's level three. So, so how do we get past level three? Right, what can be higher than saying, I know God will? I don't know, what can be higher than that? Let me ask you a question. You know, are people like, well, I know so-and-so. You know, they kept saying God's going to heal them. They believed God was going to heal them. And what happened? They died. Why did they die? So uh, let me ask you this. What would happen if you kept saying, I know God's going to save me. I know God's going to save me. I know God's going to save me. One of these days, you know, God's going to save me. No, when you died, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Come on, you you go to hell, H E L L, right? Because it's not God's gonna do it. You gotta realize. Come on, right now, realize this. Jesus already died on the cross for your sin, and so you don't say, "God, please save me." No, you say, "Hey, Father, I know you already paid the price for my sin. I believe that in my heart. I confess it with my mouth that you're my Savior, you're my Messiah, you're my Redeemer, and I take my salvation today because." you already did it. I said, because you already did it. You know, it, it, it's the same with healing. People sit, you know, R.W. Schombach said that, he said that about um, people sitting in their church pews. They sit in their church pew year after year after year. He said, no wonder they call it pew, right? Because they've been sitting in there 20, 30 years and it stinks, right? Well, one of these days, God's going to come by my pew and he's going to heal me. He's going to heal me. And listen, no, he's not. One of these days, you're going to die and we're going to have to bet bury you, right? We're going to have to bury you. And, and, and it stinks to say that, right? I mean, listen to me. People are laying in their graves right now because of prayers like that. That, that, that hurts me. That gets me mad. There's so many Christians walking around sick, beaten up, busted and disgusted, praying prayers just like that. No, faith ain't lazy. Faith has a fight to it. Faith always finds a way. Come on, faith finds a way. Faith don't work tomorrow. Faith works now. We serve a right now God. If it's not now, it's not faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. It's the same with healing. First Peter 2 24. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, become immune from the penalty and power of sin. Hallelujah. And live for righteousness for by his stripes, you who believe were healed. By his stripes you were healed. Were. Come on, level number four. That's the past tense. Level number three, I know he will. Right? That that that's that that was good for the woman with the issue of blood. It's not good for you. It's not good for me. Come on, we gotta go higher. Say I'm going higher. I'm telling you're going higher today in the mighty name of Jesus, right? Because the woman with the issue of blood, listen to this. Jesus hadn't paid the price on the cross. He hadn't broken broken that curse yet. But now, you're 2,000 years later. Jesus has already, you know, oh, that, that's why people talk about Job. Oh, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No, that's garbage. That's garbage. Job also said, sorry, I was talking about things I know not. I mean, they're always talking about Job. Well, then Job was always being attacked. Listen, I'm not Job. You're not Job. Job was before Jesus ever even came. He, Job himself said, I know my Redeemer lives, and one day he'll come and do it, right? He'll come and do it. He hadn't done it yet. I'm not him. Listen, if you, and, and I did a whole teaching on Job. You can go back and listen to it. It'll bless you mightily. But the point is, Christ has already, right? What did Peter say? He said he already personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. So willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. Oh, how many of you know we all have sins? Then get saved. <laughs> he already took mine. I don't know about you, but he already took mine. How many of you know we all got our demons? Listen, then put your microphone down and get saved. I said, get saved. I saw a preacher write that on Facebook, you know. Oh, well, Jesus sees our sins, you know, but he doesn't. No, listen, I don't have any sin to see. The Bible says I'm holy and without fault. I wasn't just forgiven. No, my sins were taken out of me.
me and borne in his body on that cross. One more time, in case you didn't hear it the first two times. He personally carried our sins in his body on that cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, become immune from the penalty and power of sin, and live for righteousness. For by his wounds you who believed have been healed. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? I, people are like, oh, well, I believe God's going to heal me. No, what, what do you think he's going to do? Come on, oh, I believe he's going to heal me one of these days. What do you think he's going to do? You think he's coming back from heaven just to take a 40th stripe just for you because the other 39 weren't good enough? No, you, you got it. Jesus did it. It's finished. It's done. He already took my sickness. He already took my disease, right? Come on, hallelujah. If a symptom tries to come right away, no, well, uh, be like David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dares defy the armies of my God? Hallelujah. The same God that delivered me from the, the paws of lions and bears is the same God that's going to deliver me from anything you bring in my direction. As a matter of fact, I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed you to the lions and the whole world world is going to know that you're God. No, the symptoms come. Who do you think you're touching? I'm healed. I was healed and I'm never getting sick again in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, I'm never getting sick. It's a done deal. He's done it. Not he's going to do it. He's done it. He purchased my salvation. He purchased my healing. Come on. The Bible says in second Corinthians eight, nine, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. Hey, guess what? Good news. Your prosperity was purchased. Come on, among other things, your prosperity was purchased. The Bible says Jesus already shed his blood that, that I could come into never being broke. Hey, I'll never be broke another day in my life. It's done. I'll never be sick another day in my life. Jesus paid for it. I refuse to struggle with sin. In. It's already been paid for. He's not going to do it. How many of you know one day we'll get our new bodies in heaven? No. Well, well yes. <laughs> but one day I'll get a new body in heaven. But the Bible says in 2 Peter 1, 4, I've become a partaker of his divine nature and I've already escaped the corruption of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's done. It's done. He's not going to do it. He's already done it. I said he's already done it. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The foundation for answered prayer, guys, is to realize that the only reason we can expect a blessing from God is because Jesus died to provide that blessing. Since it was provided for in his death, it's ours. I said it's ours. That's why the highest form of prayer is to just raise your hands and thank God that it's done. It's done. Come on. It's done. Father, you've done it. Father, I worship you. Father, I praise you in the mighty name of Jesus, it's already done. It's already done. Come on. It is finished. Faith looks and rests at the finished work of the cross. Jesus did everything he's going to do. Listen, everybody raise your hands right now, right where you are right now. Any hold the devil has on you, man, I'm not playing around. Satan's going to release his hands from God's property today. Say, I'm a child of God. That's right. You're God's property today. I said the devil's going to take his hands off your life today. Not tomorrow, today in the mighty name of Jesus. Say this, I'm not going to get victory. Say, I'm not going to get victory. I got victory. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. Come on, you're not signing off today an addict. You're not signing off battling depression or fear. Come on, you're not battling sickness another day in your life. You're a born again child of God. You're never going to be the same. I said you're never going to be. The, listen, the Lord is touching you right now to make you never the same. All things become new today. No more bad thoughts. No more torment from your past. No more pain in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, you become the new creature 
creature he created you to be. Today, you get translated out of the kingdom of darkness and, and, <laughs> and put in the kingdom of his dear son. I bless every one of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, whatever the enemy has done to wrap himself around you, I command every chain to come off now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every single one of you, you sign off here free today and free forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Be blessed. You've reached the end of another episode of The Truth. For video testimonies of God's miraculous healing power, visit our website at fishministries.org. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know of upcoming content. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free.